I am speaking with Faraz Curry, the director, writer and director of Maradona's Legs. Hi, Faraz. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. You're missing riding your horses now. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So I, so I want to just jump right in uh, and tell you, I love the attention to detail that you have put into this film. The art on the walls, the furniture, the way the radios go in and out just the look and noises of a certain time and place and, and also just the details of the kinds of things you, you the kids are seeing like the older brother telling his younger brother yes spit at your enemy but do it in secret you know uh, don't let them see it uh just tell me about your setting and your desire to capture i think you're trying to capture what you remember of your own childhood or an aspect of your child could you talk about that yeah, well, actually, what what drives me is passion, and I think the film is about a uh, passion, and passion of of kids is is greater than the, the the passion of the adult. It has some magic in it. So I I went out from this world of magic, and I tried to describe the world of the film as a magical film. And to do so, I tried to color everything, to make everything colorful, because in my memory, it, 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 it was magical moments that, that I spent uh, during this search for the card. And I wanted to make it very, impor very important for the kids. So in order to make it very important to the kids, you have to, in a way, artistically respect the environment. And uh, that's what I aim for, I guess. Yeah, I, I, and I think you did a brilliant job of that. And, and speaking of the passion of the kids, um, so I'm a, I'm a football fan. In, in America, I have to say soccer, but it's football. Uh, yeah. and, and so these, uh, the various football teams that these, uh, that's so important to the, the kids, to the characters in their life, um, what drives them to support Brazil versus Argentina when they're not from either country? You know, uh, where does that drive come from? How do they choose who to cheer from? Well, it's very, the answer to that is very simple. We are from Palestine. We don't have a country. We have a land, but it's occupied and they build another state on our land. So we don't have a country. And when you don't have a country and you are not allowed to raise your flag, you have to adopt, in a way, other countries and other flags. So I think this is the, the core of everything, of how in Palestine they are uh, encouraging uh, different countries. Uh, and you can be loyal to a country, but the country is a symbol. It's not like the, the regime or anything it's only a symbol of a, of, a, of a place like you would like brazil or you would like italy or you would like argentina and and that is the way for us it was it was like the yellow against the blue and i'm with the yellow and you're with the blue it's not more about uh, about nationalism uh, but the lack of nationalism inside Palestine and the lack of, of, of a flag and of a, of a country would drive us to, to cheer for other countries. Right. And they do it with such passion. I mean, there's such anger towards someone who cheers for another team, which yeah. in one sense shouldn't matter that much in the situation they're in. Yeah, well... For us, it's like a league, you know. Yeah. It is for you that you support a league in the United States, if you or Canada, or if you support a league. So it's your league, and you will defend it, and you will <laughs> be loyal to it. And no, even if they change all the players in it, you will still be loyal to it. So mm. that's that's the way. I was loyal to Brazil. <laughs> and. Uh... It's interesting. It feels like uh, the whole cast of uh, kids is kind of um, are representing something more than what they are. You know, the the small, the kind of smarter older brother, the more emotional younger brother. The, there's the wise girl who helps them, who saves them. The annoying neighbor who's rooting for the for the wrong team, and then this rich kid who's using you know foul language at them and has kind of lost his sense of honor. 
is there an kind of a, another layer of story uh, taking place that's beyond just their world, the world of these kids? Well, not exactly. Uh, I think uh, I just tried to color the environment, color it with characters. I love kids and I love, I love their logic. And I I tried to color them, and this is actually my third film about with with kids, and mm. it, it's a game for me. It's a joy for me. I love working with them. I love their loyalty to the project, and I love to discover uh, a character with them. Mm. That means that when I wrote the script, I wrote it in a way, but in order to, f to do the casting. For, for these roles, I would have to choose from a huge amount of kids, meaning I would literally every day go to different school and see the kids and talk to them and try to, to imagine which character will suit which kid. Mm. If I find a kid which suits the character, he also will bring his own character with it. Meaning that the kids in the film are not really actors. And in all my films that i done with children, I would tell you, this is a good actor and this is not, <laughs> okay? And I can say it like, this is a good actor and this is not. This is just, he is behaving as he is mm. in the film or she is behaving as she is. But, but, but she is not a great actor. I can tell you that like uh, with, with no problem. So, the, the 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 key is to find characters in the world which may be suitable to the role they play sometimes mm -hmm. they are great actors and sometimes they are just a character who knows how to do text and just behave and that's how i i look at, at the younger brother uh, he, he is not different the way he behaves is more than like is himself Mm. which I was very lucky to find, and he is very much suitable for, for, for the role. Uh, so it's very interesting to look for kids' characters, because there will always be a non-actor in them, just a kid who is behaving himself. And when he behave, behave himself, it would be very good on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the interaction uh that you get from them i i really commend you for it's it's just has a it does have that magical quality like you're you're discussing i was curious um it's probably just more uh, of a detail but the younger brother has the arm cast the girl her leg is in a cast there's also a, a boy who's in a wheelchair uh, early on was that just coincidental was there was that on purpose what what was behind that well, actually, it, it is a, a way that I try to, for two things, I, that's my intention and it is for you to accept or have another interpretation. For me, uh, it is a memory of a lot of kids get injured mm -hmm. uh, because we play in the wild and with no supervision of, of adults. And so really a lot of kids being injured. I was an, always have an injury in my body or, <laughs> and everybody in the, in the village will have some injury because we fall a lot. So we, we, we are free and we fall a lot. Uh, and the other thing is being the, the kids are vulnerable in, in Palestine mm. and, and, they they might be hit they uh, they might be exposed to to injuries mm -hmm. yeah but i didn't want it to be very dramatic because i think even in in refugee camps you know in palestine and in hard conditions people kids like just try to search for their game and their passion and will will enjoy you know if it's not like a something that is very 
violent in home, you have love and mm -hmm. care from home, like like the place I came from. Mm -hmm. Even if it's poor, even if it's not, uh, if it's if it's a refugee camp, kids will always find their joy and their games and will go out to play. So I didn't want to describe the injuries on kids' bodies as a dramatic issue, but it's more as part of the normal and they continue living with these injuries. Yeah, it, and it's just another layer of those details that you, you've you captured that just give a real strong sense of time and place. And I, I, I really appreciate your answer and, and what you were trying to achieve. Uh, another one of the details that I, I mentioned earlier is the uh, about the the radios and the static, and you often have the uh, the uh, uprising radio. I think is how they announce themselves breaking into the sports broadcast. Could uh, now is that based on your memories? Is that based on what was happening at that time? No, it is not based on my memories, but it is based on what was happening in what in that time. I come from uh, uh, the Galilee which is like now considered in Israel and it's the north of Palestine. Uh, and I was uh, at these times, 1990, it was like the peak of the Intifada, if you know what Intifada means. Mm -hmm. It means the Palestinian uprising, the first Palestinian uprising in West Bank and Gaza. So I was a little bit far from the West Bank and uh, it wasn't really part of my reality, the Intifada, but I can't bring this time without with without mentioning the important uh, time of history mm -hmm. of, of that period, uh, which is the first intifada. And also there is intifada and uprising. It also have the passion in it. And and it's it's how do you say it? It corresponds with 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 the passion of the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I I say I thought it it I should put it there, the Intifada. Mm -hmm. No, it made sense, and you know, I, just as you were talking about it, it reminded me of um, uh, when I was a, a, a kid in the United States. Uh, I remember uh, the uh, Watergate hearings, which led to the resignation of Richard Nixon. Uh, I remember those uh, interrupted. That what I wanted to watch on television. So I remember that being quite annoying to me and knowing that some adult thing was happening that was important to the adults, but I just wanted to watch the shows I wanted to watch. Mm -hmm. I had that same feeling with these kids. It's like, can we get back to the soccer match, please? <laughs> um, yeah. I, also, uh, so why, why uh, Maradona? Uh, did you choose him on purpose? Uh, was were you going back and forth between a couple of soccer players of that period or was there some was it because that's who you cheered for at the time or, or no you well, didn't cheer for him no i didn't cheer for him uh, maradona is one of the symbols of 1990 mm -hmm. i would say uh, when i wanted to write the script and think about what card will be they will they be looking for Mm. I knew that they are supported Brazil because I'm a Brazil fan and I wanted to be loyal to my memory and to my love to Brazil. So in a way, it's, it's, a, it's a gift to, to, to this beautiful, still till today, beautiful uh, football uh, team. Uh, but when I wanted to choose the enemy, so what best would be more than Maradona, mm -hmm. which is uh, literally Argentina and Brazil I have some sensitivity between them mm -hmm. when it comes to soccer to football and uh, Maradona was a symbol then so I think like to choose Maradona would be the best and it had to be his legs I mean th that's the most important yeah. part yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, because yeah, that's uh, that was loyal to the albums that we had when we uh -huh. were kids. Uh, so we had the uh, part for the upper body and part for the lower body. Right, right. Uh, yeah, just the the whole the whole sequence. Um, I was just reminded when I was watching this again how much that 
the speech that the older brother gives to that rich kid, just how, uh, how passionate that is. And um, that moment and, and the moment uh, towards the end where the younger brother decides what's more important to him, the, which the older brother supports, which is not the Atari uh, game. Those were just such uh, pure moments, even though more pure to memory than perhaps reality, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. I, I really love this film. I, I think our audience is really going to like it. And I, I really appreciate you, you uh, giving us your time. Hopefully we can have you out here someday when uh, things hopefully, are a little bit Hopefully, calm. my friend. <laughs> <laughs>